Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are filming another episode of Num Nums with Nana with my Nana. I remember, cook with courage. carrot pudding. So my Nana is going to tell us why she chose this recipe today. So I chose this recipe because, mostly because of the history behind it, our family history. When I was uh, growing up in, in Burnaby, my mother used to make this carrot pudding every Christmas for us. Um, it's an old-fashioned type of pudding. It's a little heavy and it's not really super sweet. And but my mother made it every Christmas and I remember all, every Christmas I looked forward to the pudding because that's the only time of the year she ever made it. We never had it any other time. When I was about 10 years old, my mother got sick and ended up in the hospital. And in, in those days, it sounds like it was back in the years of the dinosaurs, but in those days when you got sick and you needed an operation, lots of times you'd wait quite a while. My mother was admitted to the hospital actually. She had to wait in the hospital for about 10 or 12, 12 days before they could actually operate on her. <clears throat> so she was, and it, what happened, it was over Christmas when all this was taking place. So she, she came home one day, and that was the only time we saw her over Christmas. And Christmas Day, my brother, my father, and I went over to one of my aunt's places in North Vancouver for Christmas dinner. And I was feeling pretty depressed because I actually um, was not used to being away from my mother over Christmas. She was always there for us. So we go over there and we had this dinner and there's about 25 of us because we're, we're from quite a large family actually. Um, and you know, my aunt had this great huge kitchen and she had big tables put up around it and we all sat in this great big sort of horseshoe and we had this supper that she prepared. And so we're sitting around there and I was still feeling pretty cranky and upset and not very happy. And my aunt brought this uh, pudding in and they lit it on fire with brandy. My mother never did stuff like that. My family weren't quite that fancy. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she lit it on fire and they brought it in and I was thinking to myself, and I can remember thinking this, this is such a long time ago, but I can remember thinking, oh no, now I gotta put up with this eating some crappy pudding. So anyway, they put out the pudding and we all had some and I'm still sitting there looking and I sort of picked at it and I put some in my mouth and all of a sudden I said out loud, I said, it's my mother's pudding. Mm -hmm. And my aunts and uncles, they all burst out laughing because they said, oh my God, she even recognizes her mother's pudding. But it was something that was very special for me. So when my kids uh, started, when I started to have family, my kids started to get older, I started making the pudding and I actually made it all the time. None of my kids like it, only my youngest daughter. She's the only one that eats it. I don't care. I make it for myself to all those memories of my mother and her hard work of making this thing and making our Christmas so special. And uh, so I, I'm sharing that story with you because I wanted you to understand the reason I chose this recipe. Okay, so first we're gonna go over some of the equipment that you need for this recipe. And we're starting right here. Okay, so this recipe is one that evolved over time and so has the equipment evolved over time because I didn't have a lot of money when I first made it to buy a special steamer. So I had to make up things. So you don't need to run out and buy any special stuff if you have just a few things. So first of all, you need a big pot. It, this is a Dutch oven. And when I first started out, I used my Dutch oven and I used rings from the top of uh, jars. And I just put them into here. And, and the basic premise behind this is to keep your container that's got your pudding in off the bottom of the pan. Because if it's sitting right on the bottom of the pan next to the burner, it will burn. So that was my first evolution. So that went in there and then you got a lid and you put it on top after you put your pudding in. My next part evolved into a bit fancier. This is a uh, steamer basket. Now I got one of these and so because it's got little feet on it. It's kind of cute actually. It's got little red feet and it can just slide into the top of your pan like that. Now you don't put a lot of water in because uh, you don't want your you're not boiling the pudding you're actually steaming it. 
But what you have to make sure is to make sure that this middle piece is able to come out. Otherwise, if you can't, then your pudding's going to be, you're not going to get that, um, you're not going to get the uh, bowl pudding in bowl there. into there. This is the recipe we're using for the carrot pudding. As you can see, this is a well-used recipe. It's yellowed and it's stained. I use it every year. So this is the ingredients for this recipe. In this bowl here is one and a quarter cups of grated carrots. Now you can use a box grater to grate your carrots or you can use a food processor. I just prefer the box grater because it's quieter and uh, I like it. Um, the other thing is, is these, uh, the recipe calls for one and a quarter cups, but I usually grate three sort of small to medium sized carrots. And I use whatever comes out of them, to tell you the truth. I don't go strictly by, the, by that recipe. So the recipe calls for one and a half cups of grated apples. So I have got half, three quarters of a cup in here with the carrots, and I've got three quarters of a cup separated uh, into this bowl. And I'll tell you about that as we get more into the recipe. Um, you can use any kind of apples you want. Now these have gone kind of brown, so they're oxidized. Uh, the only um, the reason they've, they've gone brown is I, I grated them a little earlier. Uh, you could use Granny Smith's, which I believe do not go brown, um, but I just use any kind of apple I have in my fridge. The other thing is uh, you, which is interesting, my mother's recipe used to call for grated potatoes. And potatoes and carrots are quite similar in texture. So the only difference is, is the potatoes wouldn't have as much sugar in it and sweetness as the apples but you can't tell the difference. Uh, so if you don't have any apples and you feel like throwing a spud into your cake baking, there you go. Um, and then there is, you need a cup of flour, you need a teaspoon of baking soda, you need a half a teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of baking powder. I use organic non-aluminum uh, baking powder only because I think it's better for you. I'm not sure. Uh, this bowl has spices in it. It has a half a teaspoon of cloves, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. In this bowl, I have a quarter of a cup of softened butter and a cup of brown sugar. You can use darker brown sugar, but I would not use demerara sugar. It doesn't seem to blend as well into the other ingredients. It's kind of got a gritty texture to it. This is three quarters of a cup of raisins. Um, my, this is the reason my children didn't like uh, the pudding, was my kids don't like raisins. I don't know what I ever did to them to cause that, um, but the three of them will not eat things with raisins in. Um, and this can be any kind of raisins. It can be uh, the golden raisins or it can be these dark raisins. Uh, you can use a mixture of the raisins. It doesn't really make any difference to the uh, uh, outcome. In here is a quarter of a cup of apple juice. Now, um, the recipe actually calls for grape juice, but uh, when I've made it one year, I didn't have any grape juice. I didn't really want to run down to the store and buy any, but I did have some apple juice and I used that and it's fine. Um, you can't tell the difference. You can use either the grape juice or the apple juice. I've never tried cranberry juice, but I've often wondered if that could be used too because it's not a real strong flavored juice. I wouldn't use lemonade or any orange juices or anything like that because I think they would change the whole flavor of the whole dish. So um, those are the ingredients and uh, we can start um, putting things together. Okay, now that everybody's seen all the ingredients, let's get baking and, and produce a beautiful memory for your family too. So. I'm going to start out with mixing the dry ingredients together. So it takes one cup of flour, my trusty old Tupperware bowl or bin. It's about, it's over 50 years old. I bought it before my son was born and he's 50. And the reason I bought it was because the place we lived in in Victoria had bugs and I didn't want to spray anything around the apartment because I was pregnant at the time. And I still have the bin. I think it's paid for itself a few times over. So this is a cup of flour and then you take the raisins and I've just got them in a separate little bowl here and you take a tablespoon of the flour and you sprinkle it over the raisins and the reason you do this is 
to stop the raisins from sinking straight to the bottom of your pudding. You don't want to have them all down there. Uh, it wouldn't look very good and uh, probably wouldn't taste that great either. And then you have two teaspoons of baking powder that you add in here. Uh, it's a half a, oh, it, pardon me, it's one teaspoon of salt. I use sea salt. You can use any kind of salt. I wouldn't use any coarse salt like uh, kosher or anything like that because you want it to evenly distribute throughout your, your, your um, pudding. Put that in there. And then you can add your spices. So that's all your dry ingredients. Take a whisk and whisk it all together so that it's evenly distributed as you can get. You don't need to be real super fussy about all this stuff because it gets beaten up quite a bit. And then after you've got that, you put it aside. And I'm just going to take off these, um, this cling off of these uh, two things here. So, so let's see. So now I'm going to beat the butter and the brown sugar together. Now I've been thinking about this recipe because I was looking at it and I thought, you know, you probably could make this into vegan. Now I'm not too sure. I I don't think there's any animal products in here except for the butter. And I was thinking, you know, it would be interesting to make this with a uh, coconut butter type of thing. Uh, I think what you only have to bear in mind is it should be something that's hard at room temperature because uh, uh, I think that's what you need. Uh, my mother used to put suet in hers and uh, probably was probably very unhealthy, but it sure was good. But it's quite rich, suet. So this is sort of what I'm looking for. It's uh, mixed together, but it's not completely incorporated. It's a little bit on the lumpy side, but everything looks kind of wet. All the, all the uh, sugar looks kind of damp from the um, butter. So that's all I'm looking for. And uh, so now we work on adding the dry ingredients. And uh, so you draw a third of the dry ingredients with approximately half of the apple juice. You start with the dry and end with the dry. I think that's what my home economics teacher used to tell us. The rest of the uh, apple juice. And the last bit of the flour mixture. Okay, so that's about that's all it has to look like. It just kind of incorporated. All the moisture will come from the apples and the carrots. The rest of the moisture. So now what we have to do before we do anything else is we take the three quarters of a cup of apples that I put aside earlier and you add a teaspoon of the um, baking soda. You put that in there and then the baking soda will start sort of fuzzing and dissolving in there and it makes it kind of moisture too. It brings out the moisture in the apples and then you can add all the carrots and the remainder of the apples that you haven't put the soda in. And you can and you add in your raisins. So this is the part where you start mixing by hand. Um, only because I think you get everything more uh, well incorporated together. You don't have bits and pieces of stuff that you have left out, like your, some flour sitting someplace in the bottom of your dish and, and uh, things. So now then, the last thing you add is the is the um, grated apples that you've mixed with the um, uh, baking pot, baking soda. And see, it's starting to get moist looking. Like this is just 
from adding that last little bit of apple. And you see how moist all of a sudden it gets. It's gone from being kind of, of uh, dry looking to very moist and very, um, more like a pudding or a cake mixture. And it's done. It's that quick. Okay, so now we just have to put the pudding into the dish that we've prepared. Get every bit of it in because it's all delicious. I always think it's so amazing when you look at this because it goes from this tight, dry looking thing to this really nice looking batter. So now this is just me, but I always put a cut some um, parchment paper just over the top of the pudding because I always think that I don't like my food really with it. It's kind of acidy and I just don't like the idea of it touching the uh, aluminum foil. So then you get a double piece of aluminum foil that will fit over top of the whatever bowl or whatever um, thing that you choose to steam the pudding in and you put it on like that and then I tie this around so whatever you find that you're using you have to make try to make sure that the steam doesn't get right into the pudding you gotta show it who's boss and I just put a knot in it and now I have this is my steamer basket my advice to you is to make sure everything is lined up before you put it in the steam because I've got the water gently simmering on top of the stove. It's extremely hot, so you be careful when you're steaming anything. Okay, so we'll just put this in the steamer now. It's in the steamer, so it should have gently, gently simmering water that is producing steam. You put that in there. Try not to, I try to keep it in the middle because then the steam goes all the way around the, the thing that you're, the bowl. Okay, so you steam this for four and a half hours. Four and a half to five hours, pardon me. The only thing is, is that when you're steaming this, you've got about an inch of water in the bottom. You have to check it. I check mine about once every hour, hour and a half, and put a little bit more water in that I've boiled in my kettle. Um, one, I don't want the uh, to put cold water in there because it will stop the steaming process. And, the, and that's the cooking process. So you have to put hot water into the, into the steaming uh, water in your pan. Um, it, I, have boiled dry, I have boiled it dry in the past. It doesn't seem to burn, but the only thing is you don't really want to do that because you want a nice moist pudding. So this is what your carrot pudding should look like, hopefully, when you finish it. Um, it's quite dense and it's quite firm. Um, you can eat it right away, but when I make it at Christmas time, I always make it at the beginning of December and I freeze it until Christmas day. Um, the day before Christmas, I take it out and I thaw it out completely. And then what I do is I put it back in that little bowl that I, that I steamed it in to begin with. And on Christmas day, I put it back in the bowl and I cover it again with the same layers, the two layers of uh, aluminum foil, tie it up together so that the steam doesn't get in it, and I reheat this. And it, you can reheat it, steam it for maybe an hour, an hour and a half. It, it should be nice and warm. It doesn't need to be really, really hot, but it should be warm. And uh, then you serve it with, I always make my favorite stuff. This is called hard, hard sauce. Very sweet, very rich. It's made with sugar and butter. And this is a rum, a rum butter sauce that I make. I make, this is made with um, sugar and water and a little bit of, of um, cornstarch corn to thicken it up. And then I put rum flavoring and I put butter in there. Um, we'll give you the recipe online. Um, they're very simple. This rum sauce is my own concoction, so I kind of have to remember how I've done it. This is from the uh, Red Roses, Old Red Roses cookbook. It's got everything in it if you ever want to learn to cook. 
So today what we're going to do is I've had this, I made this one yesterday and it's been sitting in the fridge and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and I'm going to warm it up in the microwave because that's the other thing you can do is you can warm it up in the microwave. Now as for how long you can freeze these puddings for, I don't know. I've frozen them for three months, six months. They all taste good to me. Um, but um, I don't know if I'd keep it a year, but I, you can keep it a fair bit of time. Um, and in the fridge, uh, keeping it on, on the, in your fridge, I wouldn't keep it that long. I, I would think it'd probably be good for maximum four or five days. But hopefully by then, it's not a huge pudding, but it's heavy and it's filling. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to heat some up in the microwave and we're going to taste it. I get to taste it. And it's not even Christmas time. Yay, I can already wait. <laughs> Okay, we are back. We have our carrot pudding. It's been heated in the microwave and we have our toppings. We have the rum sauce here and the hard sauce, you called it? Yes. This one here? That's okay, hard sauce. perfect. And we're going to give it a taste test. Mm. Now, I am a lot like my auntie and my uncle. I don't like raisins very much. You can go ahead. I'll join in with you. Um, I don't like raisins very much. So, but I'm gonna, we're gonna give it a go. I don't know why. I like them when they're just out, like when they're fresh or I don't know how to say, when they're just by themselves, but I don't like them when they're cooked and stuff. So, you try okay. it out though. So the, the hard sauce is made with butter, sugar, and um, whipping cream. So it's not made for the people with heart conditions or anything like <laughs> that because it's pretty rich. And I've only made half the recipe here because I just find it was too much to make the whole recipe. Now my rum sauce is a little thinner than it usually is, but anyway, hopefully it'll taste fine. Like I say, sometimes it's a test in itself. Oh, I'm excited. Mm. Oh. I love sweets for breakfast. Mmm. Oh, is that ever good? Mmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. This is really good. My mom knows how to cook. <laughs> Mmm. That's funny. That's what I say about my Nana. <laughs> well, she's my Nana. Mmm. <laughs> oh, it is so it good. It is really good. Mm -hmm. All right, friends. Mm. This is delicious. I highly recommend you try it out at home. If you do, put it in the comments down below. Tell me what you think about the recipe. I think it's pretty friggin' good. Wow. So I do want to pop in here and say, this is my Nana's recipe box. <laughs> Out of everything she owns, this is the only thing that I want willed to me one day. Because look at this. <laughs> this is everything she has ever cooked us. Everything that we have ever loved. She writes it down on these little cards and she keeps them so that she can make them for us again one day. And she spices them up so they're exactly how we all love them and it's amazing and i can't wait so i think next week we're gonna try some yorkshire puddings next mm -hmm. oh do you want some sweets too this is my daughter marley it's been a long time when we first started this show i was actually not even pregnant with her yet and then we did some episodes while i was pregnant and now here she is you want to <laughs> try some Mmm. Let's see what babies think of this, shall we? Mmm. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh, she's... You good? Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's got the baby it's approval. It's Marley approved, guys. <laughs> so I think that is it for today. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below if you try any of our recipes. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Remember, cook with courage. <laughs>